We are back. This is Todd Sylvester with the Todd Sylvester Inspires Belief Cast. Thank you once again for joining us. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Veracity Networks, and my good friend, Drew Peterson. Thank you for believing in me. I can't tell you how much that means to me. And I want to thank all your listeners uh, who tune in week after week after week. I and mean, we just hit 120,000 downloads. So exciting. That, crazy? that is so exciting. It's amazing. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and, and it's not because of me. It's because of people like... You and this, uh, the guests that we have on it today, we have uh, uh, Brianne Johnson, but you go by Bree, right? Yes, I, I always confuse people. I'm yeah. sorry. Yes, no. so I'll answer to both. You answer to both. <laughs> I'm going to call you Bree, but uh, her her official name is Brianne Johnson, and she's amazing. I can't wait for you guys to get to know her a little better. I do also want to give a shout out to that music. That's by Paul Cardall. He gave me com- permission to play. Uh, his music at the beginning and end of our podcast and it's just beautiful and it brings a really good feeling in the room and and I hope you guys feel that as well and so a little background on on Brie uh, she's m- married to Jared Johnson right yes. and you have is it three kids we have three now I'm three. a mom of three mom of three wow she's rocking the minivan and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know I love that thing that driving box you know, yeah. And, you know, so she's the owner and creator of Ballet Blast, where she inspires women to love their bodies. And she does online classes, live workouts. I mean, all kinds of amazing things there. And I've watched some of those videos and it's it's high intensity, but it's just it's it looks like a like you said, a blast. Right. <laughs> yes. I try and make it fun. We but yeah. like you said, I definitely have a strong belief that women, you know, need to really understand that it's more than just doing fitness it really is like therapy for us to get in there and feel good and then I'm honestly a better mom I'm a better person when I I love it when I when I move my body so I can't wait to know more about that okay so following high school Brie was uh, signed by Royal Caribbean Cruises cruise line (laughs) as a featured dancer I'm sure that was interesting have you seen dancers on the cruise ship have you been on a cruise and I've I've actually never been on watch the shows you haven't I haven't (gasps) well and now with COVID (laughs) none of that for you I don't know if that'll ever happen again right (laughs) but after leaving uh, that job you um uh, you were uh, uh, televised on the third season of Fox television show, hit show, So You Think You Can Dance, yes. which is amazing. And by the way, she's an amazing dancer, which we're going to get into <laughs> here. Um, and she, uh, since graduating from, uh, you went to Edge yes. Performing Arts School, yes. which is one of the best in the country. And they have like trained like Lady Gaga, J-Lo, yes. Selena oh. Gomez. I mean, all these amazing people, but that's where you train. So that's the right? studio that, yes, like all the stars that you would know in Los Angeles, that's where they would go to train. And I was lucky enough to get a scholarship wow. there and go and train. So that is amazing. It was really, really awesome yeah. for me. And that's where I met my husband, actually. So I'm glad oh, it went wow, down. That's even better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you, you were a former host at ABC4 Utah. Yes. We were just talking about that and all the great people that work there. And I know Nisha make... did a podcast with you yep. and Saray and Saray. They're honestly the most quality people on that show. Yeah. I Nisha's like a sister to me. Yeah. And every time I leave there, cause I've been on a few times, mm-hmm. I just go, I just, I, I feel like I'm a better person just by talking to those guys. And, and that shows you yeah. what type of show it is. If Absolutely. you leave feeling uplifted like that, yeah, it's awesome. I yeah. think I just, like I said, she's like a sister. Nisha's one that we still go to lunch all the time. Oh, she cool. knows my kids well. We actually oh. have dogs that we think are boyfriend and girlfriend. It's fine. <laughs> I have a golden nice. doodle. She has a golden doodle. And we're getting, We're just going to have a wedding ceremony we or something a, yeah, for our dogs. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Well, you know, one of the reasons why I reached out to you is because just the way you live your life, uh, you're energetic, you're positive. And I know, I know this is not about you being perfect because I know you're not, but, Far from but you do live your life in a way with, you live with passion. And I think, especially nowadays with where we're at with this world, we need more of that. And, I and I can't wait to get in to see like, how do you do that? And so, but I'd like to start, why don't you tell us where you grew up and a little bit about your childhood and we'll kind of take it from there. Perfect. Well, I'm so honored to be on your show I'm a huge fan of yours so thank you for having me yeah thank you um so I did I grew up in American Fork Utah often referred to as American Fark Fark. um (laughs) and I lived in what I now know was a really small town at the time I don't think I knew that I was in a small town right Uh, but having left and come you know now coming back I realize I am a small town girl at heart and I love that um so I did I grew up in American Fork I have Four older sisters, so I'm the baby of five. Oh, wow. And then eight years later, we, my parents had a boy. So 
it was my dad always wanted a boy. He's like the most <laughs> man's man you've ever met who wants really? to just ride his motorcycles and uh -huh. go hunting and you know, and he got five girls. So I know when I came out, you know, they couldn't do the ultrasounds and things. Yeah. I know that I was kind of that like, oh, darn it. Can we send her back up? Another like, can, girl? Yeah, another girl. We have four <laughs> of them. Another fifth. So I had to make sure that I, yeah. you know, I really take care of my parents because I was their, their <laughs> fifth daughter. So um, and then my brother came and yeah, I lived a pretty what I thought um, traditional childhood here right. in Utah. Um, yeah. And I think now looking back, I do see some things that, you know, I, I hope to fix for my kids or help help them understand i think the perfection issue was really strong right um and i felt that a lot growing up and i think it did a number on me in ways mm. and so um now knowing that and seeing that i think i have to fight that every you know fight it fight it every day and realize yeah. that like i am good enough i am yeah worth it i am like i'm worthy i'm worthy yeah. right because i think yeah. i was always striving to have a resume Rather yeah. than I am what I do rather than I am what I am. For sure. And yeah. that was something I, I did. I had a wonderful childhood. and um, But that was something looking back. I feel like, man, I always was striving to prove to myself that I was good enough. Yeah. You know? And I think, you know, and, that's, and I'm glad you brought that up because I think a lot of us, I think probably everybody on some level goes yes. through that growing up. I think you're right. We compare. We're like, man, look at what they're doing and look at that. And right. what, what can I do? And, right. And we start saying those things like, hey, I'm not good enough. And isn't it kind of heartbreaking that like mm -hmm. we can't just accept. I look at my daughter, Stella. She's eight. And I'm like, I want her to know. Whoa, it makes me emotional talking about my daughter. But I want her to know that at eight – the essence of you, like who you are as Stella Grace, like mm -hmm. the per little human that you are is enough yeah. and it's perfect as you are. Like yeah. the things that you do on top of that and who you become on top of that, that's all great. But like yeah. you are incredible, the essence of who you are. And I think that's what I lacked as a child and it's played into my adult life. Right. Um, so I think for my kids, I really try <laughs> and who knows if I'm even doing any justice there but you know i really think that all of us like you said everyone struggles with that in yeah. some sort of a way so well and it's neat what you just said you're you you've noticed that that's kind of what you struggle with and you're doing your best to you know maybe help your kids and maybe not go through that as maybe yeah. as intense as you did but they probably will yes and and just because we're human and we're you know what i mean exactly and truth be told i think my parents did a really great job of sure. you know trying to let me know that the essence of me was great and yeah. who i am but the, something about our human nature and how mm -hmm. we are and comparing and yeah. and now with social media and all the things that they're all dealing with, I say they, we all deal with, but our kids yeah. especially, yeah. Um, you know, it takes it to a whole nother level. Yeah. So I think it's something that at a young age we have to really start working on and help yeah. them understand. Yeah. And we'll, we'll, and I'm glad you brought this up because we'll probably kind of keep referring back to this throughout yeah. our conversation today. And I, and I do appreciate you sharing that. But I do want to talk about some of the things that you've done. I know when you were, I think, was it 12, you you opened up and danced at the opening ceremonies at the, at the Olympics? You know, it's funny. You say these things and I kind of have, they kind of <laughs> slipped my memory. I'm You're like, like, oh my goodness. You know yeah. Yes. So <laughs> that was actually a huge highlight. I met George W. Bush. Really? Yes, I met the president. Oh, wow. Um, as a, <laughs> how old was I? 12? Yeah, yeah, I think I was in eighth grade. So I was a little child of light. And if you remember back in the open ceremony, opening ceremonies here in Salt Lake, there were little fluff balls down walking around with little lanterns. And there was a lot of us. Right. Um, we did have to do a pretty intense, we, we, pretty intense audition with yeah. Kenny Ortega, who did Newsies. Um, yeah. And the audition was pretty intense. I remember, I think I had to do a back handspring or something. And then we literally yeah. walked around in circles. <laughs> that's all we had to do. And <laughs> sing that we will oh, light the fire funny. within. Um, but it was a highlight. Oh, it was so special. And I did yeah. it with some friends. Um, and that's when I thought, okay, this is cool. I want to, I want a career in this. I want to meet cool people. Really? I want to, yes, that's when it kind of clicked. And I thought, really? I want to do At something. At that young of an age. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Well, and I mean, so he, George, President Bush exited out of the tunnel. Let's see. He was coming on mm -hmm. the tunnel I was exiting out of. So there was a few to get off the, off okay. the field. Yeah. And we were lucky enough to pass him. So we kind of brushed shoulders, but he grabbed each one of our hands. I remember I had my mittens on, which I now have framed because they were so, you know, it was so special. Yeah, sure. Um, but he reached out, he had his hand out and me and my friend Josie, I remember we both grabbed on each side and it brought us to tears, which is interesting mm. at 12. I'm like, why was I crying? But I think yeah. it was so 
the the energy of it and you yeah. knew how special it was it was just such an intense moment that For it brought sure. tears to our eyes so wow it was really cool i don't even think he said anything so i shouldn't say i met him but right. i touched his hand hey <laughs> Not everyone, everyone can say that, yeah. so that's pretty cool. But the power of being on that field was really special with all yeah. the athletes, and you know that was something I'll definitely never forget. Well, you know, and as as a dancer, I you know I have three girls, and they all did dance and drill mm-hmm. and all Love that it. stuff. And I mean that that is not an easy thing, you know, to say I'm going to be a dancer, right? I yeah. mean, the time and energy it takes to be good at it <laughs> is ridiculous. <laughs> Right. A hundred percent. And the your mom driving you from place to place, (laughs) not to mention the money that's put into it. You know, I mean, it's pretty much a college education put into your. It is. (laughs) It really is. So it's a lot. And I think you have to decide at a young age. This is something I really want and fight Mm -hmm. for. And I actually didn't start dancing until I was 11, 10 or 11. Okay. So most people start when they're three. So Mm -hmm. I was really behind and I didn't make I would audition in my my friends would all make a company higher than me yes and I made the lower company Mm. and I always was okay I'm gonna fix this I'm gonna make sure that I can get there and I had to hustle I had to work hard and the day that I made a company with them and then I was you know made a company but like it was huge for me because I had worked so hard because it didn't just come that easy I had to hustle I had to work yeah well and along with that you've got to I mean it teaches you discipline yeah it teaches you to, you know, I mean, you have to be confident. Yes. Even if you're struggling, right? Yes. So talk about that a little bit. Like, how are you as a girl? I mean, yeah, you're trying to, you know, you struggle with being perfect and things like that. But how was your confidence and how was, you know, you dealing with that intense schedule? I love that, that you asked that, Todd, because I, uh, I actually wore, I w- was diagnosed with severe sc- scoliosis in mm. the eighth grade. Um, and they made me wear a body cast pretty much really yes so this was a you know in the eighth grade that's you're really vulnerable oh yeah that's a time that you do not want to be wearing a cast no around your especially a body one. a body right? thank you okay like so a, like an arm cast an you arm get away cast with. okay so i am being dramatic which i tend to do sometimes so i'll <laughs> i'll pull it back but it did no, cover good. my entire torso went uh, up into my left armpit and down into my hips so oh, okay. when i would sit on a chair it would touch the bottom of the chair so i had mm. to and it would keep my spine in one place so as my as I grew and my growth plates closed that it wouldn't increase right that the curve wouldn't increase so I had to wear that for four years every day 23 hours a day so I wore that thing to school um I the reason I was able to get out of the brace was training and dance and it would strengthen my back okay. so that was another reason that when I would go to the studio I found parts of myself I found um I felt free mm-hmm. I loved it but looking back the key was my advisors, my instructors. Oh, okay. The people who later on, when I danced at the edge in LA, I felt like they had to knock me down to rebuild mm-hmm. me. And I didn't respond well to that. I, I right. needed a cheerleader. I needed someone who saw me and saw my potential and was there to lift me up every right. day because school was beating me down. Yeah. You know, life was hard already. I mean, yeah. So I look back and I'm so grateful. I danced at Jazz and Place Dance Studio in Pleasant Grove. And then we moved to Lehigh. And Chelsea Beefus, man, this woman, she had so much heart and so much love for her girls. And I felt it at a young age. And that is why I loved it. I loved dance because of her. And I think when I would have those fears that we all do or those doubts, you know, like, I'm not good enough. I Can I ever do this? Why am I doing it? Who me? Who me to try and do this? Those things. She would attack it with so much heart and love and always lifted me up. And I think that's why it became a a form of therapy for me, a form of, I always describe dance as feeling the closest to heaven that I could. Really? Yes. When I dance, and I didn't know how to articulate that as a kid. Right. But when I would do my contemporary um, and the music's on and I'm moving and I, it was almost like a prayer, but I couldn't explain that as a kid. But now I realize like, it was, it's like my way of connecting to heaven, connecting to God through movement with my body and music. I think music is key. Wow. And you what know? was her name again? Chel- Chelsea Beefus. Yeah. So Chelsea, isn't it, it's amazing how a teacher can influence like kids. Oh. And if, if, let's say she hated being a teacher and she was, you know what I mean? What, what a different experience she would have you know I faced with love that you just said that because right? that's exactly if it was just a job for her yeah she's just like oh, she was okay. there to just make money but she mm-hmm. was there with her heart and soul yeah 
and I felt it and I knew it and I actually I'm now teaching dance again I just got back in it this year and I find myself channeling my inner Chelsea every day and you do. I I'm serious. Hope you so. are no, honestly. And, I, and anyone that knows you that's hearing this would go, "Oh yeah, Bree's on fire." <laughs> You're so no, sweet. And, and you do. You have a passion and a, and a positivity about you and this energy that's that is infectious. It Tigers. really truly is. And I think what you're doing is. Like you said, you're kind of doing what she taught you. Yes. You see how she did it? Like, I want to be like that. Oh, and I also see the the opposite, right? I was yeah. also trained in an opposite way okay. where it did, that didn't work for me. And I'm like, yeah. I don't want to be that way for people. I want to help the the way that worked for me. Yeah. I mean, lifting people up. And honestly, I had a day yesterday, I have to tell you, like I sat my husband down and I was so discouraged. Mm. And I had the thought, like, is anything that I'm doing even working? You know, like, mm-hmm. am I... I feel like I'm given everything hell. I'm given it all I've got, but everything's kind of at a C plus, you know, like I can't, yeah. I, and, and so I go through these days and I'm sure we all have these days where yeah. like, I'm fighting for these girls. I'm loving what I'm doing. But then I also, I'm like, is it making a difference? Mm-hmm. So to hear you say those kind things, like, no, I think it is. Or those are the things we hold on to and that keeps well, us going. And I'm sure. And I think we all, you're right. We all kind of go, but it's just our own, our, that's the story you're telling yourself. Why do we do that? Why is this. Yes. But if I, if I was to go interview those students of yours, what do you think of Brie? They'd be like, oh my gosh. I <laughs> hope so. No, I guarantee you they would. <laughs> but I think we all do get that with the, where we let the, we allow that story, that negative story to start play yes. playing in our heads and that narrative. Yes. And so, but what we have to do is challenge those. But, but again, you did the right thing. You're talking to your husband. Hey, I'm just having a bad day and here's where I'm at. And, and allow, I think allow the bad day. Yeah. Right? Like sit yeah. in it and kind of, it was a bad day. Yeah. It was and that's okay. We're yep. allowed to have those. Exactly. And, but I think moving on from those and realizing, being able to yeah. focus on the good and channel out that negative. Yeah. Because I think, like you said, that story that sometimes mm-hmm. goes, and if you let it go, yeah, it'll go. Yeah. And I think I've had to learn throughout my life to shut that down. Yeah. Shut it down and not let it have power. Well, you mentioned too, obviously, that you struggled with, you know, perfectionism and yeah, stuff growing definitely. up. Was there other battles or struggles that you were going through, you know, as you grew up, like in, you know, even in high school? Because, I mean, it's always a challenging time for all of us. We're trying to fit in and all oh, that stuff. Oh, it's so, so awkward. Yeah. Isn't it just so awkward? Um, yes, I think for me, um, looking back, I just have so many, so many regrets. I actually, okay, so... This is getting deep because okay. I actually just sent one of my dear friends a message recently and apologized mm. to her mm. for being so judgmental uh. um, and being, I'm ashamed of how I acted at times, thinking that because I conducted myself in a certain way, because I didn't drink alcohol at that time, because I, you know, because yeah. I was this way, yeah. I was better than so and so and that was my belief in my soul I, I yeah. don't think I would say that to people I, right. but that I felt that way deep down and I am mortified of that now yeah. today I'm like I if I could change one thing it would be being able to love everyone where they were at and seeing everyone where they were at and not yeah. judging that yeah. this I think it was kind of culturally put on me and mm-hmm. um, religious pressure that I felt yeah. and those things really did a number on me and I I look back and I just with grace try with grace to give myself a little bit of space but and say she didn't know better um but I think that we all are struggling in so many ways and and I was struggling in ways too but because I was maybe not doing what so-and-so was doing I thought that you know I just I'm really ashamed of those moments and I feel like I I definitely have come so far from that and I'm so glad that now I see things through a different lens yeah. and it's taken time. I've had to shed a lot of religious, um, find my balance. You know, find there's a balance. lot of things that yeah. I, I love about how I grew up and I love about the religion that I'm a part of, but there's also a lot of things that I've had to say that doesn't sit well with me. I'm taking yeah. that out of my closet and I'm putting it to the side. Yeah. And I got gotcha. you. So, you know, in high school, I, I think so many of those things, feeling the shame of shame and guilt and, and things that were not really, they didn't need to be there. Right. No, does that no, make sense? No, it makes perfect sense. Thank you for you know sharing that. Yeah. And I think a lot of people can relate with what you're just saying. And this is one of the main reasons why I do this podcast. Yeah. Is for, for people to understand we're all in this together. We're all the same. Totally. Um, and, and as you were saying this, uh, Bree, I was thinking, 
how human value does not fluctuate. Mm. It only fluctuates in the story we tell ourselves, right? Right. right. We're, we're all at 100. There's either no special people or we're all special, right? Uh-huh. Uh, exactly. <laughs> but the only time it fluctuates is just in our own mind. Right. But Stories. the truth is, you know, I mean, you look at your beautiful family, right? And you look at your beautiful kids and they're going to they're gonna go through that where, oh, I don't feel good enough. But you look at them and go, your value doesn't fluctuate. I don't care if you screw up. A hundred percent. Right? So I'm so glad you brought that up. And I think so many people wrestle with that. They do. And I think for me, it was really hard to shed those deep rooted beliefs mm-hmm. of, you know, thinking, thinking a certain way. Right. And I want to be, and I want to lead my life in a way that is, I see you for you and I love you for you where you're at. We're all in different spaces and, and life is hard. I mean, motherhood is hard. Marriage is hard. Like it's lovely, but it's hard. There's a lot to all of it. Yeah. It's work. It's work. Yeah. It's fulfilling. Yeah. But it's work. Yeah. You gotta, you, you know, someone once told me a really good friend of mine, the definition of love is sacrifice i love that so much right and you think about in a marriage what are you doing you're sacrificing all the time with your kids you're sacrificing 24 7 and you do it because you love them Mm -hmm. but again you're right you have those moments where you're like man this is tough (laughs) honestly and i couldn't imagine we just said this yesterday (laughs) my husband and i we can't imagine our life without our kids right like at all (laughs) but man this is tricky like man what are we whoa this is hard you know wow and they're only my oldest is eight so i still have it coming wow well (laughs) you know and i thank you for sharing that i mean there is so much to talk about what you've done in life and you were talking about resumes and i know that you're more than just this resume (laughs) (laughs) but you've done a lot i mean you went to um edge performing performance uh, performing arts is that i'm saying that right Uh, center yeah twister so it's considered one of the best in the country. We talked about it earlier. Tell us about that experience because that had to have been pretty intense and at times maybe even like, man, I can't believe I'm here. Oh, almost break me at times. Yes. Right. And and also very honored. Like, wow, I how yeah. did I how did I do this? So truth be told, I was actually um on my way to being a cougarette at the time. Okay. So I had done some drill team and I had had, I loved everything that I had done there. Um, and my parents really were kind of pushing the BYU route. Yeah. And which by the way, we should mention cougarettes for what it's worth. If you don't understand, they're like the best oh, in the country. Incredible. Right. They are incredible. So yeah. if you've done drill team in high school, I mean, cougarettes is the end all be all. Like right. if you've, if you're a cougarette, you've arrived, you know? Right. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> I was shooting for that. Truth mm-hmm. be told, uh, my ACT score wasn't quite where it needed to be. <laughs> so, Welcome was, to the club. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for making me feel better. So I had taken that a few times. I was in the works. We were talking to admissions. Um, and then this audition came. A friend told me about it. And I said, Mom, please take me to LA one last time. Just take me. I was mm-hmm. working at the Brick Oven. I don't know if anyone knows the Brick oh, Oven. Yeah, the brick okay, oven. I was serving at the Brick Oven. And I said, just take me to LA. Let me do this audition. If I if I get it, I really want to do it, but there's no way I'll get it. Let's, I'll, I'll go to BYU after. All right, let's just try. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. yeah. And um, I ended up going to LA. There was, I think, I don't know the exact number, but it was a lot of people. I mean, I think 250. Wow. And they took 10 right. males and 10 females. And they did take me in for a body evaluations, to- Todd. This is real. Whoa. So. I've heard about those, but I didn't know if those yeah, were real. Yeah, this is real. So I... Did I danced and I was feeling pretty good about it. They narrow it down and then they pulled me and two other girls in and said, hey, we just need to look at you. Can you take your top, your um, shirt off? But we're more mm-hmm. sports bras, right? And right. our biker shorts. But right. they just wanted to evaluate our bodies. So right then I turned into an object. Yep. Um, right. And wow. I felt that. My soul felt that because dance to me up until that point had been heart and I'm connecting to heaven and it sounds so For cheesy, sh- but really that's. Yeah kind of how it felt so all of a sudden I'm thrown into this world in LA and I'm like okay yeah uh they ended up accepting me and taking me um but there were moments and speaking about the body evaluations there was a moment where my director referred to me as Marilyn Monroe and I thought that's a huge compliment but he referred to me in in a curvy sense um and I was in my sports bra and my biker shorts right. and he put his hands on my love handles if you will like right there yeah. on that and he said i need you to lose five pounds here as if you can choose where you're losing five pounds yeah like how do i <laughs> okay i'm gonna just work that part yes. out or, yeah exactly right? Ta- whoa 
Um, <laughs> and it was moments like that for me that I knew what I was getting into. I knew mm-hmm. I was coming into the professional world of dancing and I knew I had to expect that. But I can't sit here and tell you and s- that that didn't affect me. Sure. That was really hard on me. And I think psychologically it was way harder on me than I realized. Looking back um, – and I, okay, okay, you need me. If I want to dance with Rihanna, like I ended up doing, which was amazing. If I want to dance with Rihanna, I got to lose five pounds here. Okay. Um, but looking back, I think I hated that I turned into an object. I hated yeah. that I was, I wanted it to be about me and about yeah. my heart and about who I am. But I was entering in this world that wasn't that. And so yeah. I quickly realized I danced in the professional world for a while and I, I realized it wasn't for me and it wasn't what I wanted to do long term. Right. Um, and it was great while I did it. And I had some amazing experiences. And like you said, I met some really cool people. I felt um, like they were my family and I was living on my own for the first time out there. I met my husband. So there was a lot going on. I, I got engaged while I was on scholarship oh, yeah. and I got some serious looks. I mean, some ser- people had no shame being like, you're 20 years old and you have a ring on your finger. You know, they just thought I was absolutely insane. Um, (laughs) at this Mormon girl, who, what is going on? You know? So I, and I just, this was going to make me happy. This is what I want to do. I got married right out of scholarship and danced professionally for a while. And then is that when you danced with Rihanna? When you, yes. So how was that? Just curious. Okay. So you can't just throw that out. No, no, I know. I know. So that was my first (laughs) job. That was my first really big job right out of the gates. Um, so if you've watched, Oh gosh, the show is leaving me right now, but it was my favorite show growing up, this dance show. Um, and at the end they have a gala where all the agents come and they watch you Mm -hmm. and they'll choose who they want to represent. It's pretty, you know, uh, so we did that whole thing. And then at the end, I ended up going with Clear Talent Group. And right out of the gates, they got us this job with Rihanna. And it was so cool, too. Yeah, sure. So Disturbia, if you remember that song, it was oh, yeah. one of her hits. Mm-hmm. Um, it was at the MTV Music Awards. And I can't remember what year. It had to be 2008, I think. Um, and sh- we got in the craziest getup. You wouldn't believe it. My pictures are, you know, like tear, tore up fishnets and yeah. crazy hair and Cra- I had a co- re- weird corset on and uh-huh. we get out there and we're, of course, it's like this. You have your arms around your neck and you're acting like Disturbia. You know, oh, like weird. Yeah. It was weird dancing. So fun. The energy. Can you, like, oh, yeah. you walk out on that stage and Can't even imagine. ecstatic. I mean, yeah. it was so cool. And then you get the check after and you're like, this is a good gig. You're like, man. I'm not mad about this. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah. So that was really fun. And I thought, I want to do more things like this. So. Right. Um, finding the balance was really hard for me because I felt like I was betraying myself at times because I was an object and I didn't want to do that. So I had yeah. to really find the balance. My husband was really good to help keep me grounded through a lot yeah. of it. And that's great that you met him through this process, right? Yeah, Obviously. And yeah. Was, was, what was he doing? Was he a dancer? Was no. He, uh, so he was, had been living in Spain for a year and he had just okay. moved to LA. We had both been there two weeks. Oh, and really? we met on the escalators at the Grove. If you know the Grove, it's so random because the escalator's going up and down. And he like said some something. And I thought, truth be told, we're in West Hollywood. And he's with his brother who is bald and shorter than him. And he's tall and dark and handsome. And it's late at night after a movie. I thought they were together. Yeah. <laughs> like together, together. Right? You know? Okay. Like I'm like, this is a couple. Like, like why, are you why is he me? talking to me? Exactly <laughs> what I thought, which is so funny. So that is hilarious. So I ignored him in the beginning. And then as our cars went down the uh, S- uh, parking garage, right. he ended up saying, give me your number. And I popped out the window, gave him my number. And true story, here we are. We have three kids. So the rest is history. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But isn't that funny? He was, he was a godsend for me during yeah. scholarship to kind of keep me grounded and and yeah. I did learn a lot of what I really want and a lot of what I really don't want. Yeah. So. Well, well, and it, you know, as you said that you became this object and and how that was really hard for you. But what I love is, you know, with Ballet Blast, your whole your whole sh- spill with these women is to have them love their bodies. A hundred percent. No matter where it's at, uh, where you're at, it doesn't matter, right? And like your body is a vessel for you. Your body is here to help you have a great life. Yeah. So treat that body well. Right. right. Whatever yeah. size, shape, it's going to be wherever. Mm-hmm. If if you have an autoimmune disease like I struggle with, if you have different things, like just figure out, educate yourself and help your body be the best it can be so you right. can have a fulfilling life. Right. Because we don't need, you know, that's one thing we can control is yeah. is how our bodies operate at times. If we're giving it the right nutrients and the right, you know, paying attention to those things, I feel like we have more control than we think we do. Yeah. 
So wow, well, that's neat that you're doing that. So let's talk about ballet blast okay tell us how that came about and, and how you came up with this so kind of the timeline fits really well when I was deciding that this wasn't for me in LA um long term I was having a great time doing it and I just yeah. thought if I'm gonna have kids and I know I don't want this forever I gotta come up with a way to do what I love yeah um but make it so I can still have babies and continue <laughs> having a career. So yeah, sure. that's honestly where it stemmed. Um, I was taking a bar class out there at the time, and I loved the bar class, but it wasn't upbeat will, enough Will you explain that, for me. the bar class? Sorry, yes. So no, a bar so class is – so I teach bar. Ballet Blast is a bar method, um, and there's a lot of different types. So a bar method, typically, if you go to a, tip, a class, it's pretty low, like uh, low energy, yeah. high reps. You're getting a, a good workout. Yeah. But – Maybe some soft music, maybe more like yoga. Yeah. Um. So for me, I loved yoga, but I also loved a hip pump class, and I loved me some going into hip hop class. Yes, and, you do. Right. <laughs> I wanted to have some fun, so I thought, how can I bring my yeah. worlds together of my dance career? Yeah. I love yoga. I love bar. I'm gonna create something. Let's see how this goes. So we <laughs> actually moved. My husband's mother was sick at the time, so we moved back to Utah just for what we thought would be three months. Mm -hmm. Um. And we came back and I said, hey, guys, meet me at the studio. I'm going to I'm gonna do this class. It's called Valley Blast. Let's just see how it goes. Literally asked my friends, like, do me a solid. Just meet me here. Wow. So they came. They met at Jazz and Place Dance Studio back, you know, where my roots were. And they we did the class and one class led to another and another. And all of a sudden we had like 50 people in our class and we were having the best time. The best time. I mean, everyone's laughing. We're crying at the end because that's what we do because we're women and we're meditating and we're laying there and sweating <laughs> we do. in that women. euphoric state and we might need to cry. So <laughs> we're thinking it was just, it just yeah. kind of took off. But I'll tell you what, Todd, like in my mind, I knew this was bigger than me. And I knew if I put my heart and soul in the right place and I was centered yeah, and I told God, like, I want to create something great that will help women, but I need you to show me how. I need you yeah. to like literally take me and, and lead what, wherever I need to go to get, make this happen. Let's do it. Yeah. And there were times where I would let my ego get involved sure. or I would let, I would get out of center, out of sync with myself and it wouldn't work. It yeah. wouldn't work. I'd hit a roadblock. Wow. But then when I would bring myself back to, okay, this is what we're doing. Where do you want me? What, how can we make this happen? Snowball of people would come into my life. There were opportunities there. It yeah. would just build. Instructors would come. At one point, we had 12 locations running here in Utah. Wow. Um, and instructors running it, and it was thriving, and it was it was while I was on Good Things Utah at that time before I had my baby, and yeah. women, you know, feeling better about themselves all over the place. I mean, it was, like I said, it was bigger than me, and I knew yeah. that I just had to keep my head and heart in the right place to keep it going. And so... Fast forward 12 years, we're still doing it. <laughs> we're 12 years still later. still in it. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. That it's... is amazing. Because a lot of people have these great ideas and maybe they don't act on it or they try yeah. it for a minute and they're like, well, this is going to be too hard or they stop. But I mean, And I'm sure you had moments where you're like, yeah, do that, I want to keep doing this? That fear, that voice you talk yeah. about. Like that's yeah. one thing that I think yeah. people don't understand that anyone who's been successful at anything, they fight that voice. Yeah. That everyone has that voice on their yep, shoulder that's sure. telling you, who are you to do? People don't like you. Yeah. What? Who? What? Sh shut up, right? Like, that, literally, that's <laughs> yeah. kind of what I hear in my head. Sure, like, yeah. And you have to shut that down and say, no, I'm going to do this because I believe in it and yeah. I want it to happen. And, yeah, there's been downhills, uphills through all of it. Um, but now it's kind, it's mostly online. I do have a few locations going. But the great thing about online is I'm able to reach so many more people, Yes, right? a lot more people. And yeah. it's really flexible with my schedule with my kids. Yeah. So I've just kind of, I, I feel like I've pivoted every yeah. point in my life to kind of make it work with my family and to still feel like I'm helping women feel better and stronger. Yeah. Well, it's it's interesting as I'm listening to your story here, we go back to, you know, kind of how your parents raised you. And uh, is it Chelsea? Yes. The the, and the experience you had with her yes, and how you were like, this is, this is what I want to do. And I want to do it this way. Yes. And you just took it and run it and ran with it with the, all the other things you've been doing in your life. Right. Yes. And yes. to have the confidence to say, Hey, I want to go to LA. Take me down there, mom. Let's just go. Let's just try this. I know it gives me, a, yeah. that is like, that is, takes a lot of guts and a lot of courage to just I mean, it, go do something like that. It truthfully does. And let me tell you, when, when you say confidence, I almost want to correct you because I'm like, <laughs> I don't consider myself confident. Like, I, st I struggle with 
all the thoughts every yeah, day sure. of, you know, am I enough? Am I, mm-hmm. am I doing anything that matters? Like all those things. Um, but I think the confidence that you're talking about or that you're seeing or that is perceived yeah. is me being fearless. Yeah. Like I allow myself to get in that space of, I'm not going to let the fear hold me back. Yeah. I'm not going to let the fear stop me from going to that audition. And if I get turned down, that's fine. Cause I've been turned down a thousand other times, but yeah. I'll try again. Right. So I think trying. it's, yeah. I think it's the fear. Cause I think a lot of us struggle with that confidence of, you know, who really is confident. People might look confident and people tell me that a lot. You're yeah. confident. And I'm like, but actually I must be good at pretending I'm confident or something. Cause I'm not, yeah. com- I'm, I am good at throwing the fear aside Yeah. in most things. And I will tell you in my marriage, it's really hard. Okay. I'm good at throwing the fear sure. aside in those things. Yeah. But when it comes to marriage and true vulnerability and mm-hmm. vulnerability with my kids, the fear can be debilitating. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So. Well, thanks for sharing. Yeah, that. it's interesting. And, well, you know, and, I, and and again, thanks for being real because I think, yeah, because you do, you, you are, I mean, people who know you would say you are confident <laughs> and you are energetic and you're passionate and positive. Yeah. But again, you're human, and and for you to say this, I I would go, okay, I get it. Oh, totally. So, so my question would be then, what do you do then? What what does your day look like for you? T- again, you're so busy, but what do you do to take time for you? That kind of does keep you centered. Yes. What 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 does your ritual look like if you have one? I, or what does that I love look like? this question yeah. um, to kind of build myself up because yeah. I think if we're not careful, the world and social media and mm-hmm. truth be told, social media is hard. I don't love social media. I don't mm-hmm. love, but for me, it's, it's how I work and it's how I get things done. So I have to make sure I have a good mindset and a healthy relationship yeah, with social sure. media. And if I'm not careful, it does tear you down and life tears you down. So to kind of help myself, uh, become grounded again, I always, I'm a huge bath girl. I love my baths and I always have ever since <laughs> I was little. So I love, hey, I take a bath a, bath, a right? day, sometimes yeah. twice a day, which my skin probably doesn't love. But for me, yeah. it's it's more than the bath. It's about taking a moment, getting my phone away from me, getting, just sitting with myself and actually listening to my thoughts. Yeah. And I think water, I heard recently that water actually is, um, you know, it's it's one of the most soothing Absolutely. I, I, what did I, what did I hear? But I, it made sense to me. I was like, that is why I've been so drawn to water. Yeah. Um, and it kind of resets me. So in the morning, I'll take a bath. I'll take a bath at night mm-hmm. and kind of reset my energy. Reset. Sure. Um, and I love writing. I love. Okay. I'm not great at writing, but I love writing, and I feel like that's when my soul can just kind of go. Right. Um, is it kind of like journaling? Like uh-huh. you just kind of write down your thoughts of the day. Kind, kind of like kind of morning thing? pages. You know, you hear yeah. those morning pages. Yeah. I I love that. I love opening my journal and just going and I feel that's very therapeutic for me but I think also grabbing my kids and grounding with my kids whether it's a yeah, prayer sure. it's a it's an intention mm-hmm. um affirmations I'm really big with my dancers right now I have them all set uh they write on their mirrors affirmations yeah so you posted something that I commented yes. on of that girl who put the and I was Sweet. reading those I'm like Dylan how would you not feel good after that could you believe right? how profound those were it was amazing so she's I think 12 maybe 13 <laughs> a 12 year old can you believe it brought me to tears when yeah. she sent that to me yeah. because if I would have been telling myself those things and starting those habits when At I was 12 tw- sure um and I, I I often get and probably a lot of you listening are thinking oh my gosh that's bogus you know like I used yeah. to think that yeah. Those affirmations and writing things down and does it really help? I'm telling you, we're six months into working with these girls at dance and I've been asking them and watching and paying attention and I have them doing affirmations yeah. morning and night and watching the difference in them yeah. is crazy. Yeah, I just can, had one little yeah. dancer blossom like you have not even seen come out of her shell this past week and yeah. I pulled her aside and said, oh my goodness, what's happening right now? You have to continue this. This is, And I know that it has to do with her helping to build herself up. Absolutely. So even yeah. so, they're 12 doing it. I'm an adult doing it. Um, and I think those moments, I also taking time to sit with my husband and really let myself take off my masks and my, get vulnerable mm-hmm. and sit there and be able to really chat with him and tell yeah. him how I'm feeling that day, not just what's going on, but like these are what, this is what's on my heart today. Yeah. What's on your heart? Yeah. And I feel like that's really good to help us reset uh, for the following day or the following week. And on yeah. Sundays, I've started doing planning out the week. I'm not a very good, I'm kind of last minute. I'm not a very good planner. Um, but I've kind of set intentions, set goals for that week yeah. for my family, myself. And then it kind of holds me accountable until the next week. And 
I just think taking those moments to reset throughout the day and yeah. taking a breath and asking myself where this is coming from. Yeah. What's going on inside of me if I'm having this thought or I'm triggered in a certain way or what's where is this coming from? And let's kind of figure that out for a minute rather yeah. than just breezing past it. Wow. I love that. Thanks for sharing. That was so well said. I love it. And th again, those affirmations, I do them. Yeah, I love it. And you know, the sports science has proven that when you say something out loud, it's 10 times more powerful than if you say <sighs> it in your mind. So I did you, not know that, but yeah. I believed that. I didn't no. know that that no, was actually it. No, it truly is. It, there, really. The studies show that it's 10 times more powerful. So that's why we got to be careful what we say. So if we say something negative, yes. right? Yes. Then it's 10 times more powerful when we say it out loud. So we got to be careful what we say. Oh. But when you got these girls and you're acting, you're, you're asking earlier, am I really making an impact? When I saw that post from that girl, I seriously, yes. I teared up. Oh. I was like, Oh my goodness. A 12 it's, year old. So, and that's from you. Thank you. I mean, it really truly is. I mean, your influence is helping these girls go, okay, I'm going to believe in myself. And the same experience you had with Chelsea, one day she, the, that girl's going to be on a podcast going, oh, it, I'm here because of Brie <laughs> That is Johnson. my hope. That makes me. I guarantee it. I mean, I feel I feel chills just saying it. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> and And that's the influence. And I, I promise you, there's a reason why I had you on here, and this might sound corny to someone listening to this, but I felt drawn like I got to have her on. It's so nice of you to say that. Like, it's just the truth. Because you, honestly, like doing things out from my heart, and I feel like sometimes yeah. I, I do it, it's, honestly, I'm misunderstood a lot, let's be honest, like, and I have been throughout my life. I think I'm a very... <laughs> um, high energy person yeah. i am you i know, think people get intimidated by you i don't know i think that's I, what it is i think i am is this woman like you know misunderstood like, wow, how is and, she so like this yeah you know? and you know i'll tell you on good things utah yeah when i was first on that first year i got ripped to shreds really oh todd like like from people just commenting commenting kind of facebook thing? so nisha oh, okay. had mentioned that early on they didn't have facebook and they didn't have to deal with the comments coming in oh, through Facebook, yeah, sure. they would get calls and right. that was hard, but, yeah. but you know, getting Facebook, I, I was, I mean, they hated my hair. They hated my face. They hated my voice. They hated my, <laughs> I heard everything, everything Todd wow. to the point where, you know, I just, I, it was hard. And at the moment I would say, it's fine. It's not affecting me, but it did. And I just, I think so much of my life I've been misunderstood. I've always been told I'm too much. I'm a lot. I'm a lot. And I get it. I'm a lot. And I, I've learned to actually love that part of me. Yeah. I'm a lot, but guess what? I'm a lot because my heart is freaking big. Yeah. My heart really is yeah. big. And these girls, I want to help these girls. I want to help my family. I want to help these women. Yeah. I want to make a difference. Yeah. And so it's okay if I'm too, too much, you know, yeah. I, I, so for you to say that you felt something from me, oh, for sure, it There's means no more than, you know, because yeah. it's, it really is from my heart. Yeah. Well, and, and to be honest, yeah, you are you are big. You do <laughs> like you know, meaning you come in with you. I'm you walk loud. like your energy introduces itself the moment you walk into the room without you saying a word. <laughs> but see, but that, <laughs> but that influence you have on those girls, that's what they're going to remember, and that's who matters most. Is not just those girls, but your own kids and your husband and the people that matter most. They're like, man. I wouldn't want it any other way. It's the people who are insecure, honestly, and I, and I, I do this for a living, so you can't d debate me on this, <laughs> that it's when we're insecure and we see someone like just li bigger than life that we the way to make ourselves feel better, we will cut you down. We will like, oh, yeah, I don't like your hair. I don't like your voice. I don't whatever. Right, right. And, and it's because they're hurting. And if they were honest, if I could get them on here, I could scrape that all away and go, why are you hurting? And they would break down and go, yeah, I don't know. I said that because I just feel crappy about me. Gosh, and isn't it such a sad? It's sad. I just never want to be that person. So for 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 what it's worth, those those comments were not necessarily directed at you per se. I know they were, but the, yeah, I'm like really, they definitely were. So. It was more about them than you. Well, thank you, you for know? saying that. But and I anyway. no, I I think I think the the truth of it, you're probably right. Um, but it hurts, man. It burns, you know? Yeah. Like, I think we all want to say, we don't care what people think. We don't care. Yeah. Like, we do. We and do. it And it hurts. And yeah. when you're living, I think when you live with your heart open wide, cracked open, and yeah. you're trying, mm -hmm. then it's those things that make you want to shut it 
shut it, pull it back. Right. Okay, I'm not. I'm going to protect my heart, and I'm just going to give it to my family, and that's it. Yeah. But guess what? I'm not happy doing just that. I want to yeah. do that, and I want to do a lot more. Well, you're meant to do more. Yeah, I want sure. to. Yeah, for sure. I think... I think when we struggle, like you look at your struggles growing up, I think it's the, all that adversity is the wake up call to your greatness. Yes. It was just waking you up and you've woken that. up and, and seriously, I love what you do. Thank I love how you, you, you so carry much. yourself. And I know you're not perfect and no. I, I don't sit there and go, gosh, you must just have them all. I just love how you are vulnerable and, and the way you present yourself, you, you, it's authentic. So thank you. It's really cool so, to watch. So much. That means yeah. the world to me. And I really yeah. just hope that. I can be, it sounds cheesy once again, but like I want heaven to work through me. I, I want to be bigger than me. I want love that. And I think if we all could kind of tap into our power oh, of yeah. that. Do you know, I just saw, no, uh, Avengers, the last Avengers movie. Uh -huh. This is so silly. But at the very <laughs> end, I'm telling you, Todd, at the very it's end, right. when <laughs> everyone brought their own power to the end, right? Like you have Captain oh, yeah. America, you mm -hmm. got Thor, you got all the things happening. I was brought to tears because I thought, if we each could just tap into our own yeah. God-given gifts yeah. that we have been given to bring to this world, this planet for our kids, for our family, for our loved ones. But I think our insecurities get the best of us. Yeah. And my wish for everyone and for myself especially is to not let that stop us right. and to pull it away and bring our gifts to the table. Yeah. And what a incredible world it really would be, right? Especially when, with all the pain and heartache right now. Yeah. Like, let's all rip that apart and let's yeah. bring our gifts and, and not let people try and tear us down and make us not. Exactly. I love that. Very well said. Thank you. Avengers shout out. You like that? <laughs> that was very good. Very <laughs> but, good. But I did. It was kind of a spiritual moment for me no, to be like, yeah. oh my goodness, this is really powerful. Yeah. You, you connected know? with that and that's yeah. great. I love it. Well, if there's someone listening to your story right now who is just maybe in a dark place, <sighs> they're struggling. And I mean, obviously you've shared a lot of great things already, beautiful stuff. If they're that one person that's listening right now that's just maybe feeling a little bit hopeless, what could you tell them right now that might help them? Tomorrow's a new day. Tomorrow's a new day, and it's okay to hurt today. It's mm -hmm. okay to sit in it today. But, like, gear up and mm -hmm. educate and find someone who loves you. Find a friend. Find someone who cares because you, there's plenty of them. There always yeah. is. Yeah. And I think sometimes we feel alone. I know I have a lot. Um but I know that there's always someone I can reach out to and always yeah. some help that I can get. Um, and tomorrow is a new day to start talking to yourself differently mm -hmm. and see things differently. So wherever you're at and you're stuck in that funk and it's part of your path too. Yeah. It's part of your journey, right? Yeah. This is going to take you somewhere great. So take it, learn from it. And tomorrow, like it's going to be a little bit different yeah. and it'll be awesome. And I think yeah. I've been there plenty of times in my life, especially we didn't tap much into the marriage stuff, but marriage has been really tricky and mm -hmm. really hard. You know, you bring two people together and I think in those moments of taking each other's cores and finding the, you basically just bring them up and bring it out to the surface. Right. Yeah. And I think there's been a lot of hopeless times for me where I've thought, Oh my goodness, can I do this? Can yeah. we do this? We both have thought this is hard. Sure. Yeah. And then the next day, comes and we fight and we educate I we learn we get therapy we yeah. meditate we do all the things that we you do the things in your book that you know yeah. are going to help you and eventually you'll climb yeah you'll keep climbing it. you know yeah we're all doing it we're all climbing and each day hopefully tomorrow we climb a little higher yeah a little um, more yep again very good advice i love it that's fantastic thank you so good well, if someone wanted to reach out to you and learn more about you, yeah. um, you know, maybe find out about these classes and things that you do, yes. what's the best place for them to go? Um, probably my Instagram, which okay. is Ballet Blast. Um, often gets people are like, Ballet West? I'm like, no, no, no. Very, very different. <laughs> <laughs> very different. I wish I was on Ballet West as their You're principal like, dancer. So different. Yeah, yeah. No. Um, Ballet Blast <laughs> on Instagram, but also uh, you can go to BalletBlast.com and the website is there for all my classes and all that stuff. But on a personal level, I would love to hear from you. Please DM me. Like yeah. I, people who are in my space of just wanting to live with their whole heart and live a big yeah. life and help other people. I want to be your friend. Wow. So please reach out to me. That's beautiful. I love it. And I'm so glad that we're friends. I'm so glad yes. we got to do I'm this. I'm so time. glad we get officially meet. And again, um, I, like I said, I love what you do. Well, I love what you do. Oh, this thank is you. so awesome. <laughs> so I really thank feel you. honored that you brought me in today. No, thank you. That means a lot too for me. And, and I know our listeners uh, have, you know, are going to be the ones that are blessed for this because <laughs> of the story, because they'll relate. 
you know? And when they do see you and like, man, look at this powerhouse. But at the same time, she's just like me. Oh, I'm, she struggles. We all struggle we do every this, right? single day, yeah. but we fight. Yep. And I'm here to help people who want to fight. We keep fighting. Right. And that's what you're yeah. doing. All yeah. I love all that just, you do. Yeah. Fighting away. We fight. Fighting away. <laughs> well, I love it. Well, thank you for joining us and thanks for being vulnerable and sharing your story with of us. Course. It was awesome. Thank you, Todd. I yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, there you go. Bree Johnson. And uh, please reach out to her. Check out her site. Check out her you know, Instagram and reach out to her. Ask her any question. Obviously, you can tell she's an open book. <laughs> and you will love her passion and energy. And I'm sure she'll talk to you even if you're just struggling. It has nothing to do with dance or anything else. 100%. That's what she's doing with these girls. And it's really remarkable to watch. And so she truly is a powerful light on this planet. And we're grateful to have her. Thank um, thanks, listeners. Thank you for joining us. I love you guys. I keep keep sharing this keep downloading it i mean i can't believe where we're at it's so cool but i love you and uh, i'm so grateful for all the guests and especially today with Bree. thank you so much thank and, uh, you again and congratulations to you thank you okay guys till next time <laughs>